Well hello, welcome back to the Shopify Print to Demand tutorial for beginners. So this is the second video in our mini course and it's niche research. So the last video was just an introduction into Shopify Print on Demand and now we're going to go into sort of the, the niche research which is to me, which I explained in the last video, is the most important um, aspect of building any online business, not just print on demand. So I would ask you please to uh, click the subscribe button so you get notified of the other videos in this course because they're going to come fairly fast um, and if and I would also appreciate it if you could like this video as well. So moving on. So what will you, what will you learn in this module? So what is a niche? The types of niches that work with print on demand. How to find a suitable niche and what you will need is a Facebook account to use Facebook Audience Insights. I'm going to show you how to use that. You will need a Google account for using Google Trends uh, and for using the Google Sheet that I'm going to share with you. There will be a link to that sheet under this video. Um, you will need a Pinterest account um, and um, you know they, they'd only take a couple of minutes to um, to set up um, and in fact you know I think you can use Pinterest without having to sign up so you know, if again, if you have any questions about any of this, just email me info at clevermerchants.com. So, what is a niche? If I look on the online dictionaries, there's loads of different ones. Uh, one that comes back a lot is a niche is a job or position that is very suitable for somebody, especially one that they like. And I think that's very, very important. You know, some especially one that they like, and that is something that uh, we're going to look at. Um, so if you, you take a niche, uh, it, it's, it's important that you at very least like it or have an interest in it, I think. Now, it's not 100% that you have to, but um, I'm going to explain why it is important later on. So in regards to e-commerce, a niche means a distinct segment within the market, generally a targetable part of a market where the customer demand is still unmet, and that's really, really important. And I, in the introduction video, I kind of spoke a little bit about, you know, you know, it, just because you have a passion in something does not mean that millions of other people also do. And, you know, the market could be saturated. So it could be a small niche with a small following and there's already loads and loads of people trying to sell within that niche. So the cost of demand is still unmet means, yes, there, there is probably competition and that's a good thing. An awful lot of people think that when they're setting up their online business, they have to reinvent the wheel and, you know, sell into a market that is not, nobody else is. That's not true. You know, I do recommend that you kind of put your own twist on it or create your own little blue ocean or something like that. But competition is good because we can, you know, tell what's selling and what's not selling. Finding the right niche to sell your products in is the most important part of any online business you know and it's probably the most important part of any business you know so there's no point designing a store filling it full of products and trying to sell to a niche that does not want to buy or to an audience that does not want to buy and that, that is really, really important and the amount of people that skip this is is, is very very frightening um, and you know most budding entrepreneurs do not spend enough time on researching their niche and you know they just jump in and lose an awful lot of money lose an awful, a lot of time because time is money uh, and then they realize that you know this is not working so if you do this now uh, trust me on this it saves you in the future so the big three the big three niches health and wellness wealth and relationships okay and um, so it doesn't matter what type of online business you are trying to build they are the biggest and best niches to sell into right so examples health and wellness would be you know uh, trying to lose weight trying to quit smoking uh, trying to you know fix your your back pain wealth would be you know uh, trying to you know set up an online business uh, how to you know be a good uh, card player to make money uh, Anything to do with wealth, gambling, anything. Relationships, um, you know, uh, how to find the, the, you know, your, your partner in life, um, dating, 
and but also relationships is also the relationship between you know a mother and son a father and daughter a brother and sister you know you can do products around that as well um, now um, but in print on demand you know a lot of we're not looking to sell something in digital products etc but we can still target these niches and more now what I mean by that is you know I talked in the introduction video about you know a drop shipping model a model where you go and you go to warehouses and, and manufacturers and sell their products on your on your site and they then ship the items to your to your customers but we're not going to be selling you know weight loss products we're not going to be selling um, you know digital products on how to lose weight we're going to be selling physical products like and like um, um like jewelry and t-shirts and hats and mugs um but we can we can still hopefully uh, find a sub niche within them big three and um, but what we were really looking for and I kind of jumped the gun here a little bit is passionate niches you know people that have a passion for a certain niche and and that's what we're going to go into now you know so a passionate audience so first of all what is your passion Right now, I don't, most people, you know, passion is their children or their family and stuff like that. And you can, uh, you know, find a sub niche in there and sell products too. But outside of your family, you know, what is your passion? You know, what are you passionate about? Is your passion the passion of millions of people? You know, and that's one thing that you you have to be you have to be careful on. And I mentioned this earlier on. Your passion might necessarily be the passion of millions of other people, and a mistake that people make is, is that they just plow ahead with something related related to their passion. Now, it is very, very important that you have an interest in, you know, or knowledge of the of the audience of the of the passion that you're trying to sell to, and I explain why later on. But on, on the flip side of that, is it can also mean that you become blinded to everything else bar that niche so it's important that you strike a very very good balance so is your passion something that people talk about on their lunch break or out when out socializing i used to many years ago i worked in a printers and at lunch time all the lads talked about was you know and so did i <laughs> was sport whether it be football you know i'm in ireland and you know gaelic football and hurling is also big here but it was sports 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 they talked about sports on their lunch break when we went out for a pint maybe on a Friday after work what was the main topic or conversation apart from giving out about the bosses <laughs> was sport you know so you know think what do people talk about in their spare time what do people attend in their spare time does your passion have dedicated online forums I'm going to show you how to find them and when you go into the shop is there magazines dedicated just to that niche you know when I go into I went into the shop yesterday and I just had a quick glance on the magazine store there was magazines about fitness sports uh, weight loss there was magazines about are you seen one about knitting <laughs> Um so what you know and that's a good you know idea give you a good example of, of what you know people are actually buying in relation to is there books you know when I think about there must be millions of books about sports people uh, written by sports people about sports and um, is there TV programs around your niche um, again I'm using sports a lot because that's what I'm interested in you know there's, there's channels just for sport you know and that's a good indication of the popularity of the, of that niche now do people buy products in relation to your passion right and that you know again is something that we're going to have a look at just because there is a, a massive audience and a massive audience for that passion does not mean that people actually physically go out and buy jewelry items or watches or t-shirts in relation to that niche right so that's something I'm going to show you as well if you can combine solving a problem with your passion then you can make an awful lot of money now as I talked earlier on with the three main um, you know niches that are out there solving a problem for somebody is without doubt you know the, the, the best 
sort of niche to get into. If you can help somebody lose weight, if you can help somebody, you know, um, quit smoking, uh, if you can fu- do a, a, a digital product, a course around that, or, or help give, or sell products like supplements and stuff that help them, then you could be onto a massive winner. We're print on demand. That is a little bit more difficult because we're not looking to solve the problem for somebody. We're not selling weight loss products. We're not selling um, digital courses. But what we are selling is products that relate to a passionate audience. So if we can also combine some sort of problem solving into that, then it could be massive. An example I would give you, I was looking at a report the other day in, in on the news about certain breeds of dogs are being banned in, in Ireland and you know well, some of them breeds of dogs could be very very popular could have a very passionate audience you know and so a problem for that niche would be how those dogs are viewed by the media and the public so you could do a t-shirt or design on a t-shirt you know that says hey my dog is, is friendly um, or this breed of dog is not a threat or something you know you could turn that around so you're, yeah you're not solving the problem but you are highlighting it and you know you could tap into a massive where people go yeah I want that to you. I want that design I want to show that this this dog is not dangerous or a threat to children or whatever and, I, and I'm look I'm just thinking off the top of my head I could be talking rubbish here but I'm hoping I'm giving you an idea you know have a look at what the problems for that niche are and can you highlight that in a design and that could be a massive winner because if everybody's selling the same type of product the same design that could be an issue where you are I'm, I'm you know giving you advice here to try and put your own twist on things find your own sort of designs and stand out from the rest and if you do that you could be onto a big winner so the goal of all of this is to find a passionate niche that you can sell products to, right? And I, there are certain criteria that we're going to talk about a bit later on for that. So here's a few examples of passionate niches. Pets. We all know somebody that is really passionate about their dog or their cat or their parrot, whatever. And within those, you know, there's sub-niches to different breeds of dogs, different breeds of cats, etc. Religion. Again, we all know somebody who's really passionate about the religion. Regardless of what religion it is, people are passionate about religion and they also buy products in relation to the religion. Professions. You know, you have the big ones like police and firefighters and nurses. But, you know, what about the, the kind of lesser well-known, like, you know, who knows? People might buy products in relation to the profession of the elect- electrician or plumber, train driver whatever so this is something that you can look into travel travel is massive you know people are traveling more now than ever because of the the low cost of of, of flights and accommodation and the, you know internet has you know able to buy tickets online and plan out your journey do you know i know people who've done a train journey of, of europe you know so travel is massive and you can do products that you know that target people who are into travel sports and outdoors all the different sports football american football ice hockey baseball but all of them the sub niches all the different teams that are in there outdoor camping hiking you know so fishing it's massive patriotic and politics. I'm proud to be Irish. I'm proud to be English. I'm proud to be American. I'm proud to be Italian. And um, you could it could be a certain political figure or political party that is also installs passion uh, within people, either for or against. And and that's something as well that you know you need to keep in mind. You know, certain political figures and political parties have you know split people down the middle. And, uh, you know, apart from sports, I noticed in Ireland as well, politics is, is something that's discussed a lot. And you could name a, a certain political per- figure or party and get so mixed results. But that's a good thing. Because you don't 
you know, if you install that amount of passion out of somebody, then that could be a niche you could go for. History. American history, Irish history, ancient history, you know, and then within them, certain, you know, American history, Civil War, American Revolution, there's some niches within them all. Entrepreneurship and motivational. Um, all those, you know, public speaking is massive in the United States. You know, you think of Tony Robbins, you think of all these other people that people follow, um, motivational quotes, keeping people sort of motivated. That's a massive niche to get into. Uh, trains, planes and automobiles was a was a famous film with John Candy. You know, train spotting. People are mad into planes, uh, uh, you know, cars, flash cars, old cars, model cars. Movies, you know, people, there's, now, with this, especially this sort of niche, and any niche, you have to be very careful about copyright, you know, so if you found that there was a massive following for a particular movie, you wouldn't be able to use the, the official logo of that film, or, you know, the official image of that film, but if you out, think outside the box, maybe there's, you know, you know, Terminator, for instance, the quote, I'll be back, you know, that's you hear that quote, people automatically assume or connected to that film. So quotes, you know, can't be copyrighted. Now the person's image and their name would be, but if you think outside the box, you could find something really, really good there. Gaming, again, you won't be able to use the the official logo or the or the name of the game. But again, you could do something that targets the lovers of a particular game. You know, and gaming is huge. You know, when you think of just people going out buying gaming chairs and, and, and stuff like that, so it, it, you would have to... Is there t-shirts and jewellery you could do in relation to that? I'm sure there is. Comic heroes, comics and comic heroes. It's a massive, massive... Ma sorry, massive niche. Very dedicated followers. You think of all those superhero comics that are out there. I'm sure there's something you can think of to target those people. Now animals, you know, we've already talked about pets, but you, your, your, your passion could be for, you know, farm animals. It could be um, fantasy animals like unicorns and dragons. Who knows? And again, it, it, this opens up another massive uh, opportunity for you to sell your products. Causes, you know, um, we talked a little bit about patriotic, but you know, there's also causes as well. Um, free, you know. Uh, free the elephant or s save the elephant save the tiger and, and, and things like that crafts sewing knitting um, loads of others TV shows um, I'm watching the Viking series at the moment and it, it's a massive TV program I was a big fan of uh, Game of Thrones um, there's so many very popular TV shows in fact over the last number of years, TV shows have probably become more, you know, popular than, than movies. Again, you would have to be careful on the copywriting, but I'm sure, you know, if you, you know, look into this, research this, uh, you will find maybe quotes or designs that aren't copyrighted. You know, well, quotes definitely aren't, but like Vikings TV series, like the Vikings as, you know, as a historical thing, is 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 very big as well and you know for my home city for instance dublin was founded by the vikings in 988 so vikings tv series plus vikings as a historical um thing would also be very popular and again the big three the health the wealth and the relationships if you research into them three there's probably sub niches in there that you can target now you've heard me mentioned sub niches a few times so what exactly am I talking about there so when we're talking about pets um, that's very general and what I mean by that is say for instance you were to do a Shopify print on demand store just and say right this is a store targeting lovers of pets you would have to do hundreds of designs of hundreds of different animals okay so if you niche down a bit so okay we're going for dogs. But again, what breed of dog? So, if you're trying to do a, a Shopify print on a man store and do a design 
that appeals to dog lovers in general, I don't think that would work because you're trying to, you know, find a passionate niche. So you're, if you're doing a design or a store that's trying to target all lovers of dogs, I don't think that would work. But if you then sub-niche down into a certain breed of dog, like a bulldog or a German Shepherd or Dalmatian dog, Siberian Husky, the list is, goes on and on and on. That then brings out the passion in people because um, it, it, I don't think a general dog loving design would work, but a design targeted at people who have a, an interest just in or own just that breed of dog, then you are more likely to um, make sales. And again, with cats, I have to be honest with you, you know, I would know very little about cats, and I've probably named, and I know there's probably people screaming at the screen now going you've named probably the you know the two less well known cat breeds I'm not sure American Cull American Wire Hair but there's people very passionate about their cats and um, I know one or two that are um, and if you research the different niches of or uh, breeds of cats I'm sure there's ones there that have very passionate audiences sports and outdoors so just for example I took the NFL but again, that's very broad. If you don't design targeting all lovers of American football, I don't think it would work. And what I recommend you do is sub-niche down and look for uh, an American football team. So if you are a lover of American football, what team is in your area? Um, does it have a passionate niche? And again, you would have to be careful about copywriting, about using the official logos of these teams. But if you, again, do your research, I'm sure you can come out with something in relation to to that, um, to that niche. So history. History is very passion for a lot of people. One I just took out here is ancient history. But again, if you're doing designs just targeting people who love ancient history, I don't think that would work. But again, if you sub-niche down and target people who have a love for ancient Rome, ancient Greece, ancient Egypt... Um, Irish, uh, ancient history, you know, you will f that to me has a better chance of working. Again, animals, you look for farm animals, again, it's ducks, sheep, pig, etc. I don't know, that, people might have a passion for sheep or pigs, I'm not sure. And the Google Sheet, um, this will be underneath um, your, uh, underneath this video that you can use. Um, I'm going to go into that a little bit more later on. So criteria for choosing a sub niche. So this is where we go, you know, I've been doing a lot of a lot of talking in the last two videos. This is where we're going to come up now to the stage where you're going to be doing a little bit of work. I'm going to show you the groundwork for this and then you're going to then do your research. Um, I'm going to show you how to use everything that I mentioned here, so don't worry. So, the first criteria is 1 million audience on Facebook audience insights. So, you would need a Facebook account to use this. Um, Facebook, despite all the other social media platforms that are out there, you have Instagram, you have Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook is still the biggest one and it's also the one that, that keeps most rightly or wrongly it's still the one that keeps most information about people so that's where we start so one million audience and Facebook audience insights at least one Facebook like page with five at least you know 500,000 likes now this is one I debated a little bit on I did have it at a million um, but I done a test with a few students and they came back and said that a million was very, very hard to find. My argument was, well, hold on, if this is a really passionate audience, then there should be one with one million. So we kind of, you know, what they were saying was that they found loads with 300, you know, 300, 200, and, and that all together they added to a million. So what we came to an arrangement was that, okay, f at one that has at least 500,000 likes. And I think that, you know, if it's a passionate niche there should be at least one that has that amount of likes on one page at least one active facebook group with 50,000 members or more again this was a hundred thousand 
but uh, you know I was doing a bit of debating with the, the students and we, we got it down to 50,000 so at least one active Facebook group now when you start looking you would find loads of groups with you know 10 3 20 there needs to be one with 50 and the reason why Facebook groups are are very important is because you know if it's a passionate audience a passionate niche there's they want there's going to be groups discussing uh, you know about this topic about this niche if there's not you know one with at least 50,000 then it's not passionate enough you know and active is very important some of these groups are a few years old you know Facebook is, is around now what since I think roughly around 2007 some of these groups could be 10 years old and not active today so when you go into these Facebook groups you will see 10, 20, 30, 40, even 100 posts per day and that gives you an example that gives you kind of an idea of whether it's still active or not um, because if there's 50,000 members how many of them are actually active and I, you know, from running Facebook groups in the past you know, if your group has 50,000 um, then probably only 10% are active on a regular basis and that's why I think it's important to have groups with high numbers and you will be joining these groups and you will be interacting with these groups and I think that's very very important it's something that I, I discuss in another video being active in these groups will lead to people going to your store Reddit you know community with at least 20,000 members Reddit is massive in the United States and Canada um, if you don't plan on selling worldwide or you don't plan on selling into the United States or Canada but say for instance you're li you're watching this or listening to this in France um, well then you, and, and maybe you decide that you just want to sell into the French market you will need to go and find some sort of community apart from Facebook that has a group with 20,000 members and there's loads of different online forms you can have a just Google around and you will find you would definitely find one. Google Trends as I said earlier on you would need a Google account to use this with a, at least a popularity of 50 so and hopefully rising so Google Trends kind of gives you an idea of you know the popularity of this overall from Google search results and so this kind of tells us you know whether it's a, you know what, the, what what's good about this is is that it can tell us whether you know yeah this was really popular back in 2004 but in 2020 it's an it's not a runner anymore and that's very very interesting what we want people to be physically typing in into Google you know looking for something in relation to our niche whether it be you know how to train this breed of dog or how to you know is there you know looking for items in relation to our niche Pinterest account or a board with at least 20,000 followers and don't worry I'm going to explain Pinterest a little bit more if you don't know much about it and I, Pinterest is gaining in popularity especially in the United States and Canada and it is a great way to drive organic traffic to your store and you can also advertise on Pinterest and I think Pinterest is, is growing in popularity and it's going to be massive in 2020 and it already is, but it's, it's only going to get even more popular. And five good selling products on Etsy with over 1,000 reviews. In relation to print on demand, I recommend we check Etsy. A lot of people go onto Amazon and eBay. In regards to print on demand, you know, I don't think it's the best. Yes, there is t-shirts for sale. You can do a print on demand t-shirt, you know, business on on. On Amazon for me Etsy is the best one because a lot of the products are that are on that site are you know print on demand and you can also sit when you set up your Shopify store some of the apps the supplier apps link straight onto Etsy and you can sell on Etsy as well so to me Etsy is but now when we get to the further research part of, of this course we will be looking at Amazon and eBay but for the moment we're not and again if you have any questions contact me my email address is info at clevermerchants.com but we're now going to go into I'm going to show you the criteria now we're going to physically get down now and start working 
Right, okay, so let's have a look at Facebook Audience Insights. Right, so, as I mentioned earlier on, Facebook is still the biggest social media platform out there, and it, it holds a very unhealthy amount of information about all of us. It kind of knows what our interests in from what we what we click on, what we read. It, it, it gathers all of this and it can tell what our what we're interested in, right? So even without you sort of know, maybe you have an interest in something. So, you know, at the moment I have this set to the United States. You know, you can go in here and you can, you know, click this off and choose whatever region. You can choose worldwide. You can choose whatever country you will be mostly selling into and um, because I'm going to be aiming towards mostly towards the United States now my store does sell or any store I have does sell worldwide the United States is my prime is my biggest market so I kind of leave at the United States because if it's not big there I don't go with it and that's that's basically it and um, so earlier on we talked about you know you know the Dogs. I'm going to start right at the beginning here. So, you know, if I go with pets, okay? Uh, no, actually, we talked about dogs. Right. Oh, no, I'm in the wrong, sorry, I'm in the wrong part. Yeah. So, I'm going to leave it age and gender. I'm not going to touch that for the moment. I'm going to leave the age. I'm going to leave the gender. Um, and I'm going to explain why, you know, so... In, in a few minutes, but at the moment it's United States, and we can see here we have between 150 and 200, mi 200 million, you know, Facebook users on Facebook, you know, so that's a, a massive amount, right? So it'd be crazy to do an ad to try and target those people because it's such a broad audience, we've no idea what interest those people have, and this is why Facebook audience is so good, so that we can narrow this down and target people who have an interest in our niche. So if I go to the interest here and go pets. So there's between 100 and 150 million people who have an interest in pets. Right, but that could be dogs, cats, alligators, uh, gerbils, hamsters. It's too broad. And it'd be mad for us to create a store with all different types of, of, of um, designs aimed at loads of different pets. So we need, as I said earlier on, we need to niche down. So if I put in dogs, so our audience is getting smaller now, between 70 and 80 million, but still way too big, it's still too general. What sort of dogs? Like I could do, if I try and do a design that, that tries to appeal to all dog lovers, you know, it's not going to work, okay? So if I narrow this down now a bit and I go with uh, maybe Poodle. Sorry, it's on that. My spelling is atrocious. Right, Poodle Animal Breed. Okay. Now, there we go. That's much better. Now, what I said earlier on was an audience, a Facebook audience of at least one million people. You know, what I'd always try and do is try and get between one and five. Um, because if you go to over 5, especially if you go over 10, it becomes too broad. We try and narrow it down. And the reason why I say at least a million is because at this moment in time, we have all ages and we have all groups, or sorry, all genders. When you do the testing stage of this, when you're testing your designs, you might find that a certain gender and a certain age group are clicking on your, 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 your image more than... And so just say, for instance, you find out it's women aged between 30 and 50. So if you find that 90% of women aged between 30 and 50 are clicking on your image, then I would then do a... I would probably pause that ad and then just do the ad for women at that age group. That will then narrow our audience. And we don't want to go under you know, 100,000. I, I try not to go under 250, but 100,000 to me, once you go under that, it actually costs you um, a lot of money to target it. The smaller the audience, the more money it's going to cost. So you need to strike a balance. Too broad of an audience means you're you're hitting people that have no interest in what you're trying to do. If you go too small of an audience, it's going to cost you a fortune in advertising. 
So try and strike a balance here. That's why I always say go for an audience that's around a million. Right, so Poodle. So here's our uh, our sheet, you know, link to this is under the video. So we're in the main criteria and we're not going to do further research or results just yet. That's for a later video. So at the moment, it's Poodle. And the Facebook audience was between two and two and a half as far as I can remember. Am I right? Okay, so for this one now, we now move on. And we're now going to go onto Facebook itself. And we are going to go with, there's myself and my kids. So I am a real person in case you were wondering, um, you know, I have a face for radio. That's why I don't plaster my face all over my videos or anything like that. So Poodle. So what we're looking for here, guys, is a, a Facebook-like page that has at least 500,000. Uh, likes so we need to go with pages oh, sorry about my pay my my um um my internet's a little bit slow at the moment for some reason so try this so here's the first page 60,000 likes um uh, you know obviously nowhere near the size that we're looking for I love my poodle. Seventy-six thousand. Um, poodle lovers. Sixteen thousand. Uh, poodle fan club. Thirty-eight thousand. So, this is not you know looking good because normally what I find is, if you don't find it within the first four or five you probably won't. Now that's not always the case. Um, uh, the Poodle Tales. And another thing that you have to keep in mind, right, there's 200 tales and I think that's, uh, yeah, so that's an actual, I think, business. And that's okay as well. So what we're looking for here, guys, is a like page that's dedicated to that niche. So you know, I love Poodle's page, or it could be a business that, you know, caters for that niche. So that's okay as well. Um, it, but what is wrong, what, what you have to watch out for, say for instance, we're searching for dragons. We're looking for pages that, that have a love of dragons or sell products about dragons. But, you know, if I type in dragon, it's probably possible we'll find a company that's called the Dragon Takeaway or the Dragon Insurance Company. That's not what we're looking for because they only have the dragon in the name. They, apart from that, they have no other relation to that niche. So you have to be careful that you're not looking at pages that are just called after that, that have no other you know connection to that niche. Um, I'm going to check one more. Now, you know, I'm, there could be people watching this going, Jerry, I know a page that has Poodle on it. And if you do, yeah, email me. Contact me. But at the moment, um, I'm going to leave this one because it just does not look like um, that there, there is a like page just for Poodles that has 500,000 or more. Now, obviously, if I add them all up, yeah, it probably would reach 500,000, but that's not what we're looking for. So at the moment, it's a no. Okay? Now, I ain't gonna mark this for the research at some stage, so but I'm just gonna move on for the for the for the video, okay? Um, and I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna choose um, a different. I'm gonna stick with dogs for the moment, and I'm gonna go with um, German. You know, and it's something I've talked about in the article in my blog. So German shepherds. It's between seven and eight, right? You know, I know I said between one and five, but look, let's go, let's go with this for a moment. Um, so German shepherds. Right? Uh, I think that's a seven to eight million. Okay, so. Is there a Facebook like page that has at least 500,000 likes?
Now, a lot of things you have to keep in mind as well, because I'm based in Ireland, sometimes, you know, where your location is, pages relate, related to where you are come up, so you have to sometimes dive in a little bit and, and find the ones that, because we're looking for pages, I don't care where the pages are, to be honest with you, as long as they have over 500,000 likes. So, German Shepherd page. Okay. Ah, now, there we go. 572,000 likes. Okay. I love German Shepherd. A dog must be more than an animal. It must, he must make your life. Um, so, this is a page just for German Shepherds, uh, for lovers of German Shepherds, and it has 572,000 likes. Right, so... That, you know, but it's no harm having a look and see, can we beat that? You know, and <laughs> there we look, like, the German Shepherd dog community on Facebook, two and a half million. Okay, so you see the difference with this and Poodle. You know, so already this is telling me that this seems to be more of a passionate audience than Poodles. And that one has 925,000, you know, so uh, absolutely. I'm going to say 2.5 million and others you know so you know, what I mean by that is is that there's there's other pages that you know fulfill the criteria here right so now you know I'm going to look for um, where are we? groups Facebook groups that have over um, 50,000 or more on it you know I don't really care where the groups are because they all have the same loves. Now Ireland and Britain will probably have a, a less group so I'm just going to see 20 groups. Now look at this 800 posts a day right so this should fit once I see that I know it's a large group hundred and right, 102,000 members right there we go and you know I'm just going to go back here and 800 posts a day means it's active, but it also usually means it's a large group. There's one that has 450 posts a day. And if you can't see the, the amount, go to members here on the left. And we have 12,000. Okay. But at the moment for the video, yes, 102,000. And, you know, you could go and look and see, is there any more? And, and you know, Facebook groups are very, very important. And to me, a very important part of selling is, is building relationships with people. It's going into these groups, offering value, becoming a target figure. And that will then in turn drive people to your store. You know, you know, I wouldn't recommend you go, hey guys, I have this great product. Now what I would do is, if you have an interest in, 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 um, in German Shepherds, then you could do uh, an e-book. In, you know how to take care of a German Shepherd. Seven or seven things you need to know before you buy a German Shepherd. Send that, and you would have links in that ebook to your store. So you, you're providing value. You're becoming a target figure on that niche, and that then drives sales. That's why Facebook groups are very important. But it also gives you an idea of what the issues are for German Shepherd uh, owners, and you could also get ideas for products. Um, so, so far, German Shepherds is doing very, very well. Um, right, okay, Reddit community. Okay, go back to our... Um, so, Reddit is like uh, an online sort of, you know, community. It's very, very popular in the United States and Canada, but it's growing um, in popularity around the world. Um, but I'm going to do change this to, um, to worldwide make sure it shows all communities so everywhere okay now Now let's see. German Shepherd, thirteen thousand. Uh, German Shepherd, sixty-five thousand. Right. So, 
Um, we have a very sizable community here on, on, on Reddit just about German Shepherds. Yeah, so 65,000, that well fits in, you know. And again, Reddit community, 20,000, you know, that is a very low number. That's a very conservative number. The reason why you have it lower is because Facebook groups would be more popular, but Reddit is growing in popularity, and I think 20,000 is very low, you know. You know. So there's, there's Reddit communities that have a couple of million, you know, so I think 20,000, you know, should be well easy to find. So I think that was 65,000. So that well covers our 20,000. Now, Google Trends. So Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian, World Cup, football, American football. Um, right, so German. German, no, not the German language, Shepherd. There we go. German Shepherd dog breed. So this tells us the popularity of this by you know it, by people type physically typing in asking about you know this dog. What is a German Shepherd? Um, is it where do I buy one? Um, are German Shepherds safe to keep? You know all, all any this collates everything in regards to this. I was telling um, in the last twelve months, like it's 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 hardly it's. It went under 75 back in October 2019. So over the last 12 months, you know, it's it's keeping a very, very, it's a very, very popular search term, you know. Now, we can now then change this for the last five years. And what does it tell us? Um, you know, it has, it, 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 in the last five years, you know, it hasn't really gone anywhere near 50 by the looks of it. If you can just... 67, 68, you know, so it, it really is, it, it continues to be, in the last five years anyway, a very popular search term. Now, since 2004, when they started taking the, the data, um, you know, it was under 50 back in 2010, but then in the last 10 years, you can see that it's getting more and more popular. Yeah, it goes up and down a little bit, but as you can see though, you know, in the last five years, it has not gone near 50, and it, it's touching on 100 sometimes. So I, by the looks of this, it is a very popular uh, niche. It's a very popular searched uh, term. So yes, um, over 50. And you know, I could add more to that saying, you know, it's 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 near fifty, it's near a hundred. Alright, so very popular. Now Pinterest. Okay. Now, so you can continue with your sign up, continue with Google. If you have a Google account, you can sign our Facebook with this. You don't, and it's a very easy, it's a simple process to, to register with Pinterest. Um, so, Pinterest, Pinterest pins. So, you know, it is a, I don't really use it that much for my Clever Merchants account. I really need to because, you know, just by putting other people's pins, I'm getting impressions, I'm getting my, um, you know, my, you know, my brand out there, um, and I need to really use this now. I use it more for my, you know, my Shopify stores, because I don't have a Clever Merchants Shopify store. That's my, my WordPress blog, but I really should be using this a lot more. So, is there, an, uh, you know, an account, is there an account on Pinterest that is dedicated just for German Shepherds, right? Now, so if I change this to people obviously they're not people they're dogs but it's accounts owned by people and um, so german shepherd shop 27 so you could say 28000 um and what do we say was the criteria here again um pinterest uh, with a, a person or a board with at least 20000 followers right so 
absolutely does. I'm going to move this Pinterest up here beside her. Yeah, so it costs 27 Now, some, if there was no accounts with that, does that mean Pinterest is an on runner? No, it's not, because what you then also have is boards on Pinterest uh, that people, you know, accounts make, and they add pins just for that. Right, so what I mean by that is, right, so there's a board called German Shepherd Puppies. Okay, it's pictures of puppies, German Shepherd puppies, and you know, it's puppies for sale, and it has ninety-four thousand followers. Right, so if there wasn't any accounts, have a look for boards that you know have at least twenty thousand. It just gives you an idea that you know, if there's twenty thousand people following that board, and I go and create an account and start making pins in regards to that niche then it's quite possible that I can get them followers to follow me. So look, here's everything German Shepherd, nearly 1900. So here's products for German Shepherd. And you can see 45,000 followers. So this is a mixture of products and funny memes about German Shepherds. Uh, you know, so if I click on one of them, you know, just give you an idea. You know, so this is uh, snazzypup.com. Okay, so to me, it really is, a, so far in any way, a very, very passionate niche. Sorry. Yes, uh, 27,000 um, account. And I could also put in here, you know, the board, just 40,000. Now, Etsy. Okay, so this is really, really important. So, so far we have established that German Shepherd has a very passionate niche. We know from the Facebook like pages. We know from the Facebook groups. We know from the Reddit community. We know from Google Trends and from Pinterest that it is a really passionate niche. Now, but is there people buying products in relation to that niche? Okay. So we need to find for every search term that I've listed here, and I've listed three, um, five good selling items, um, 5,000 reviews. No, that should be a thousand. Sorry about that. I'll change that. Um, so what I mean, so let's go on to Etsy. You don't need to have an account with Etsy to, to search on its, on its site. So, you know, Etsy is, you know, uh, it's kind of like Amazon on eBay, except that it has products that, you know, are handmade or handmade by in person or handmade by um, a, an affiliate partner of yours. So I'm going to explain more about that as we go into later videos. So Etsy is, is great for checking print on demand type products. It's much better, in my opinion than checking Amazon or eBay. Um, yes, at a later stage we will, but for the time being, this is the best site to check. So, so one of the search terms there is German, and this also gives you an idea, sorry, like what are people physically typing into Etsy? Scarves, mugs, t-shirts, yeah, but if I'm going to check jewellery first. So, can we find five items, five German Shepherd jewellery items that have over 1,000 reviews? There's one. Pet Memorial Keychain that has 3,600 reviews. So think of it this way, guys. In regards to reviews, I always say only between 1 and 10 people leave a review. So if there's 3,600 reviews, then that means roughly 30,000 people have bought that item. So that's massive. So there's one. There's another. Right, two. Oh, and they all have five stars, which is brilliant. There's another. There's three, four, five, 11,000 reviews. 100,000 people have bought this. Do you see now why, why I use Etsy? Um, and then there's another, so the list goes on and on. So that's an absolute yes. <laughs> uh, absolute yes. 
Okay, t-shirts. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry, guys. Just lost my train of thought there. German Shepherd T-shirts. Now, again, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm just looking at the popularity of it. You might necessarily want to go down the road of T-shirts. You know, people are fifty-fifty about selling T-shirts because you do. Of all the items that you get the most hassle for, it would definitely be T-shirts. People buying the wrong size and wanting to return them. But that does not mean you can't sell them. You know, it's up to you. But what this is really about is finding, you know, is there people actually buying products in relation to our niche? So German Shepherd T-shirt, yeah, there's, you know, over a thousand five, and have five stars. Um, there's one that has two, two thousand two hundred, and German Shepherd Mom. I like my German Shepherd. Yeah, three. Um, there's one that sold, you know. Nearly 10,000, so 50,000 have bought that. And there's another one, absolutely. So this one is a definite yes again. And wall art, um, again, should be very popular. Should be. Now with some niches, you might have to, you know, go on to the second or third page to count up your five. Um, but you know, as you can see here, you know, there's, there's no real searching involved in this one. Um, German Shepherd art print, you know, for, and the reason why, wall art is really important because this is where you can really, really stand out and be different to the other. So, you know, other people that are selling German Shepherd um, items, if you can come up with a really, really lovely design and it looks well on wall art. You know, you could just sell wall art and forget about your t-shirts and jewellery. That's why I'm saying wall art is really important. Now, we know that's an ad, but, it, you know, it has it just proves here that it does sell. You know, here's a really sort of standout-ish design, you know, that sold at least, you know, 20,000, you know. So this has made somebody an awful lot of money. So there's two, there's three. Um, I think that's the same one up there. Uh, and different... Uh, that's sort of the same one, but different way, but it, yeah, it's four. Uh, maybe another wall art somewhere. Yes, five. Okay. And again, you can look further into that, and it gives you great ideas of what sort of item, you know, sells well. So, I'm now hitting nearly an hour on this video. So, uh, I'm going to end this video soon. So, what I want you to do, before you look at the next video, is I'm, or you're going to add... So think of all the, you know, the, the, the niches that I mentioned earlier, all the sub niches. Um, add some ones in here. And then in the next video, I'm going to also have some more results in here to, and show you what worked on and what didn't work. And then we're going to go into the further research and, and pick a niche. So, you know, I hope you like this video. Please like it. Please click the uh, sub subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you know, email me at info at clevermerchants.com. So I hope to see you on the next video and uh, good research.